I purchased this board for $21 on AliExpress and it purports to be a low distortion audio range oscillator. It's powered with plus and minus 15 volts and has a two audio out. It's described on Ali as this, a uh, one kilohertz sine wave oscillator with a minus 124 dB harmonic distortion. $21. It's available as a bare board. I don't remember the price of it, but I bought one. Here's the schematic. I believe these here constitute these two resistors that are sealed potentiometers. And I'm thinking VR3 may be the output, I'm not sure. If anybody has any idea where this circuit comes from, uh, please drop me a note in the message. In any event, the critical thing is 0.0064% or minus 124 decibels of distortion. This is quite good, at least for my usage. I actually wanted to test some of these JLH69 amplifiers. And to do a really good or significant distortion test, you should have a good audio source. So let's talk about sine wave distortion, what it looks like and how we measure it. So here are two sine waves. Well, not really. Here are two repetitive waves both of them at nominally 10 megahertz. The upper one looks like a nice sine wave. The lower one looks more like a square wave. Now they're out of sync by about a half a cycle. But there's two ways. One looks good, one does not look good. Let's see what the difference is. Here is the uh, nice looking sine wave displayed on the spectrum analyzer. And I've got markers set up at each harmonic frequency. And you see the nice sine wave has almost no harmonic energy. A little bit is maybe noticeable at three. Let me turn peak hold here on once. Okay. We can see a little tiny bit of the third harmonic. So that's what I would call a fairly nice sine wave. Now let's take a look at the god awful sine wave. And you see the difference between a nice sine wave and a horribly misshapen wave. Now each one of these peaks represents power, energy. If we were to express this entire signal across a resistor and measure the voltage developed, the R M S value of the voltage. RMS gives an, a, an estimation, pretty good, of the heating value or the energy in a wave. When you buy electricity from your utility company, you're buying at 
some nominal RMS voltage. So we take this whole ball of wax, express it across a resistor, and measure that voltage with an RMS voltmeter. And whatever value we get we call our reference. Let's just call it 1. And then if we were to take out the fundamental frequency, the remaining voltage across this imaginary resistor would be the noise and distortion components. And that's a popular way of coming up with distortion. The whole signal compared to what's left when we remove the main signal as a percentage or a ratio. So let's see how we do that to an audio frequency. This is a Hewlett Packard 331A distortion analyzer. It was probably manufactured in the 60s, maybe the 70s. It would have been contemporary with the 1969 JLH amplifiers. I've inputted a signal from my Tenma audio oscillator. This is a, represents a filter. Now I have the oscillator set for nominal 1 kilohertz. And we're going to measure percentage of distortion. Okay, which is this outer scale. And I'm going to set this outer scale to a nominal 100%. And that would be right about there. The 1. If I were measuring dBs, I would set it at 0 here. But I'm going to measure percentage so the reference level will be set to 1 and this equates to 100% or the whole ball of wax as I refer to it. So that's our reference move over and measure the distortion. Now to get to measure the distortion we have to remove the fundamental frequency. We do that by varying the filter. As I approach a thousand hertz I'm nulling out that fundamental. and I null it as far as I can. Now things will become touchy here in, in a minute. The trick is to watch the needle go down and remember the lowest point. And if you miss it and go back, try to get it lower. So I missed it. There we go. I have a fine balance control here that also knows it. It'll be very touchy on the frequency. So 
So I get that now that as far as I can. So now the one is a tenth of a percent. This is point zero eight percent, zero six, zero five. It's about point zero five four percent, which is not bad. So that's the measured distortion from my Tenma audio oscillator. It's a matter of getting the filter and the balance to minimize the signal or to most effectively remove the fundamental frequency. Now if I wanted to I could look at the remaining distortion products here because this output is taken after the filter. Now notice this, this is a 400 series Hewlett Packard RMS voltmeter. The total range of this thing is 600 kilohertz. Now let me hook up the little AliExpress board once. I want to set the level to a reference voltage. I'll set it to one like I did before. Switch it into the distortion mode. Try to null the, uh, because the frequency may be different now a little bit. Once again, we're on one tenth. So we're hovering around 0 0.02. You can get it some lower if I'm very, very careful. Looks like I can get it around 0 0.01. I was able to get using the 331A distortion analyzer 0 0.01. If we rounded off that 0 0.0064, we would get 0 0.01. 
So it's probably as good as this or very, very close to it. So let's talk a little bit about this thing called RMS, which stands for root mean squared. The RMS value is determined by measuring the area under this peak from the zero axis up and down. It's not the average and it's not the peak. It's the root mean square. And this area inside the wave, and it's an equal amount above and below, is, is the energy or the heating value of the voltage when a current flows. We measure three different voltages when we're measuring uh, repetitive waveforms. The peak voltage is measured zero to peak. The peak to peak voltage is measured from peak to peak. Assuming the signal is symmetrical around zero, that means peak to peak is twice peak. One peak up here plus one peak down here is two times peak. And here you can see this voltage is two volts peak to peak, or one volt peak. In a perfect sine wave, the RMS value is point seven zero seven times the peak. If we have a peak of one, we should have an RMS of 0 0.707 and we read a little bit more. This is reading 730. That extra voltage is in the distortion component. Let's look at a square wave. This is a 2 volt peak to peak square wave or 1 volt peak. And the area under this wave is a rectangle full of, entirely full. So the peak voltage and the RMS voltage is almost identical. And if we look here, we'll see the peak to peak is 2, a peak of 1, an RMS of 0.98. We're losing a little bit of voltage by the fact that these sides are sloped ever so slightly. The thing to remember is a 1 volt peak square wave delivers more heat, or maybe more light, than a sine wave of equal peak value. It's the RMS that makes up the difference. The RMS also indicates a distortion component. As I said, if it was a perfect sine wave, the RMS would be 0 0.707 times the peak. Here it's almost equal to the peak. So I think this little board will be just fine for testing our JLH-1969 amplifiers. So if you've watched this far, thank you.